During 19th century, people were facing lot of problems like casteism, inequality, racism, untouchability and many others. Therefore, social reformation that is improvement or changes in the present law system was very much necessary. So many social reformers protested against this and improved systems in India. Raja Ram Mohan Roy was born on May 22, 1772 in Bengal. He became the main initiator, that is one to start social reformation in India. Along with Sanskrit, Persian and Arabic literature, he was expertized with Hindu scriptures like Vedas and Upanishads and Muslim scriptures like Quran and others. He even learned Hebrew and Greek languages to read the Bible in its original form. At the age of 22, he learned English and joined British East India Company as a clerk, where he was soon promoted as a Divan to collect revenues in Bengal Presidency. During this time, there were many cruel practices in Bengal like caste system, child marriage, polygamy and sati system. Sati system is also called as Sati Prata. Here, when a husband dies, his wife who is a widow was supposed to burn herself to death on her husband's pyre. In the beginning, she had a choice, where later she was burnt forcefully in the name of culture by the people. This angered Raja Ram Mohan Roy and started to fight against the Sati system. In the beginning, he started Atmiya Sabha with a small group of his friends which later turned into Brahmo Samaj in 1828 with many people in Bengal. The main purpose of this group was to remove the caste system and to educate people by forming a new Hindu society with the teachings of Upanishads and to stop the socio-religious maladies or cruel practices in Bengal. After taking many steps, he was successful in convincing the Governor General, Lord William Bentick, to stop this Sati system in India. With his continuous efforts, a law to prohibit the Sati system was created in 1829 with the help of Lord William Bentick. He wanted to purge Hinduism by removing the caste system and superstitions. Raja Ram Mohan Roy tried to develop rationality among the common people through journalism. He published a journal named Samvad Komudi in Bengal language. His Atmiya Sabha published an English weekly newspaper called the Bengal Gazette and also a Persian newspaper called Mirathul Akbar. Now let us see some of the important aspects of Brahmo Samaj. Firstly, this movement started on 1st January 1828 supporting monotheism, which means to believe in one God and to stop cruel practices in different cultures. Next is to stop polygamy, which means a wife or a husband in the presence of their partner marrying another at the same time. Here, usually a husband had more than one wife at a time. This step was taken to treat women equally through Brahmo Samaj. It also helped in opposing the child marriage where a girl was usually married to an old man. Brahmo Samaj followers also supported to get a share in husband's property to a widow after her husband's death. They even tried to stop the caste system by teaching Vedas and Upanishads and started many schools and Vedanta College in Calcutta. They encouraged English education in India and welcomed positive things from Western culture. For his dedicated efforts, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was awarded the title called Raja by the Mughal Emperor Akbar II. Rabindranath Tagore called him Harbinger of Modern India, which means who signals that something is going to happen in the future as well as the prophet of nationalism, 
which means who strongly supports and believes in his nation. Raja Ram Mohan Roy died in England due to illness in 1823. His contributions and his efforts to stop the sati system, caste system and child marriage until his death is an inspiration for the young leaders and created history with his unforgettable improvements in India. During the late 1820s to 1830s, the youth in Calcutta were highly intellectual and believed in modern thinking. During this time, a young Anglo-Indian named Henry Lewis Vivian de Rosio, born on April 18, 1809 in Calcutta, to an Indian father and an English mother. At the age of 18, he was appointed as a professor of Hindu college in Calcutta and was inspired by many English romantic poets. When he started debate competitions and discussions among the students on topics like God, science, religion, history and many others, his students got attracted to his knowledge and very soon he had many student followers who started to support his broad thinking. When De Rosio started to educate by arguing against the old tradition and culture of Hinduism along with women's rights, discrimination and educated about other countries' cultures, students who were from Hindu traditional families joined hands with him and started opposing some of the traditional practices of Hinduism. This angered many parents and Hindus who strongly believed in their culture and started to oppose De Rosio. Finally, he was forced to resign in 1831 by the directors of Hindu College. He died at a very young age of 22 in the same year due to cholera. However, his young student followers who got strongly influenced by him, who were also called Young Bengal, continued to spread modernization by joining many fields like law, journalism and by serving even as a social reformist. Dayananda Saraswati was born on February 12, 1824 in Tankara, Gujarat. He was originally named Mul Shankar. He started questioning life and death concepts at a very young age. Later, when he was asked to get married according to the traditions in the society, he ran away from the house at the age of 21 and wandered all over India which means for the next 20 years he roamed in many places like temples and holy places where he met many yogis in the mountains and forests. Still, no one could give him the perfect clarity about God, life and death concepts. Finally, when he met Swami Virajananda Saraswati in Mathura, all his questions on life, death and the afterlife were answered through Vedas. He changed Mool Shankar's name as Rishi Dayanand and gave him the responsibility to spread Vedic knowledge throughout the society. This way, Dayanand became a great follower of Swami Virajananda and started to gain Vedic knowledge in deep. He also introduced Anglo-Vedic schools for Indian students to learn both English and the Vedas. Ari Samaj was a Hindu reform movement started by Dayananda Saraswati in Bombay on 7th April 1875. The main purpose of Ari Samaj was to remove false beliefs and discriminations away from the Hindu religion. Now let us see some of the aims of Ari Samaj. Firstly, to believe in one God by doing good things in society and to stop worshipping murtis or idols. To avoid ignorance which is avidya and to encourage vidya which means knowledge. To spread Vedas which gives us true knowledge by learning and teaching them. To stop being selfish and to do good things to others. 
to promote equality between men and women to stop polygamy and child marriage to stop man made caste systems like brahmin and shudra and to treat everyone equally to encourage inter caste marriages and to stop sacrificing animals in the name of god during the 19th century due to the caste system and other problems there was a lack of unity among hindus and many hindus were getting converted to other religions and once converted such hindus were not allowed to join back the hindu religion so through arya samaj dayananda saraswati started shuddhi movement and started to spread vedas and educated people about caste equality and others by taking these steps he was able to bring back the hindu people from other religions later when he was invited as a guest by maharaja of jodhpur for diwali he suggested king on ruling the kingdom with great responsibility and to avoid women based entertainments in his court this angered one of the dancers in king's court and served poisonous food to dayanand he died in the year 1883 at ajmer on the day of diwali by forgiving the lady dancer Dayanand Saraswati played an important role in encouraging modern Hinduism by spreading Vedic knowledge. He has given a remarkable contributions to society in educating people on reducing caste system, false beliefs and so on. Therefore, he was also called Luther of India or the makers of modern India. Prarthana Samaj was a Hindu reform movement started in 1867 in Bombay by Dr Atmaram Pandurang Though it was mainly inspired by Brahmo Samaj it became an independent movement supporting Hinduism It also welcomed and respected ideas of other religions like Christianity and Buddhism they treated everyone equally by having the meals prepared by low caste people and respected even muslims some other leaders of prarthana samaj were mg ranade who was a judge of bombay high court and a scholar of sanskrit he played a major role in developing prarthana samaj then pc majumdar sir rg bhandarkar sir n chandavarkar and many others Now let us see some of the aims of Prarthana Samaj. Firstly, to remove the caste system and child marriage, to encourage widow remarriage, to stop dowry, sati system and untouchability, and to encourage monotheism and to remove idol worship. Some of the programs conducted by Prarthana Samaj are they started a journal called Subodh Patrika. night schools for working people were organized free libraries and women associations were started orphanage and shelter for widows were provided since prarthana samaj was developed by many highly educated leaders with a modern view of spreading hinduism it was successful in reaching many people in western and southern parts of india by conducting many social service programs During the 19th century there was a lot of discrimination related to caste and gender where lower caste like shudras were dominated by upper caste like brahmans To solve these issues during British rule many movements were started One of those important movements was Satyashodhak Samaj started by Jyotiba Phule also called Jyotirao Govindrao Phule on 24th September 1873 in Pune he belonged to the mali community where even his wife savitri bai supported him and became the head of women related social services now let us see some of the social services conducted by jyotiba phule firstly in 1855 jyotiba started a night school at his house and workplace 
In 1857, he set up a school for girls in the plot sanctioned by the government. He also opened an orphanage for women belonging to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. He demanded free and compulsory primary education up to the age of 12. Some of the principles of Satyashodak Samaj are: firstly, to believe in one God, to abolish the caste system. and to encourage equality and freedom for lower caste people the members of satyashodak samaj included lawyers merchants landowners untouchables agricultural laborers and many government officials to provide equality to shudras and to show how they were dominated by brahmans they published a newspaper called dina bandhu and books like gulamgiri They also conducted a non-Brahmin movement and argued the power given to them in social, religious, and political areas to create more employment opportunities for lower caste people like Shudras. They started providing English education and was successful in getting the support of the British government to provide jobs for the Shudra community. Now let us see some of the aims of Satyashodak Samaj. firstly to educate women and lower caste people like shudras to help people through social services and also they strongly believe that there is no necessity of brahmans to act as intermediaries in any traditional events to pass the prayers from man to god and honors prayers are enough to reach god Like this Jyotiba Phule played an important role during the 19th century in uplifting the shudras by providing education creating jobs and by providing equality in the society After the War of Independence in 1857, also known as the Sepoy Mutiny Act, the British considered Muslims as dangerous enemies as they opposed the British heavily during this act. So the British started developing enmity against Muslims and started punishing them cruelly and formed many policies against them. This made Muslims miss many opportunities as they could not get English education and other facilities. During this time, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, born in 1817, was serving the East India Company as a judge and remained loyal to the British government. He opposed some activities of the Indian National Congress and believed that Indians were not ready to rule themselves and to follow the British rule by being loyal to them. After realizing the backwardness of the Muslims in the society, he tried to remove the enmity between Muslims and the British. He educated Muslims to follow Quran which explains simplicity and purity rather than believing in other Islamic scriptures that say different things. When he started to oppose the parda system for muslim women also polygamy which means in this case a husband having more than one wife and also encouraged muslim women education this made many orthodox muslims to oppose his views still sir sayed continued to educate people by starting mohammedan liberty society in 1863 where he conducted debates and discussions based on religion social and political issues he argued that people should follow and understand the religion based on changing environment to adjust to the modern world he started translating english books to urdu by forming a society called the scientific society in 1864 where the translations are done for science related and other books To spread his views widely he founded Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College also known as Aligarh Muslim University at Aligarh in 1875 This college became very popular as admissions were open for students from all religions without any discrimination 
and Muslims started to get English education through many teachers who were from England. Therefore, this college helped in starting a movement to develop Muslims called the Aligar movement. Sir Sayyid Ahmad's work was supported by many Muslims, Hindus and Christians and started donating to his college. This way, Sir Sayyid Ahmad became one of the important reformers of India and received the title as Prophet of Education. Ramakrishna Mission was started on 1st May 1897 in Belur near Calcutta. This mission is a trust started by Swami Vivekananda who was a follower of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was a Hindu saint and religious leader of the 19th century. He was also a priest at Kali Mandir, Calcutta. The main purpose of this mission is to spread the messages and beliefs of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa through his famous Indian scripture called Vedanta. Vedanta is a philosophy taken from Vedas which are religious writings like Bhagavad Gita. Now let us see some of the important teachings of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Firstly, he strongly believed that one has to attain moksha, which means one has to release or attain death with their karma. Example, if you do good things, you will be happy. If you do bad things and hurt people, you will suffer a lot. So, something good or bad that happened to you because of your past actions is called karma. He also believed that all religions give the same message. Later, a trust called Ramakrishna Mutt was started in 1897. Both Ramakrishna Mission and Ramakrishna Mutt's headquarters were located in Kolkata. Today, it has more than 150 branches throughout the world. Swami Vivekananda was born in 1863 in the Kashta family in Calcutta. His real name was Narendrana Datta. He studied both Western and Eastern philosophies. Philosophy in simple words means a person's thinking or idea on some concepts. He started teaching Indian philosophy to both Indians and Westerners. After his guru's death, Vivekananda travelled to many parts of India which helped in understanding the social reality of India. Here, social reality means commonly accepted opinions, behaviours and beliefs by people. In these five years, Vivekananda noticed poverty, illiteracy which means a person not able to read or write, casteism which means discrimination or treating people differently based on their caste and untouchability where low caste people or shudras were treated very badly by the upper caste people. Among all these, Vivekananda strongly opposed casteism and untouchability. He declared that one who helps the poor is Mahatma where a person is loved and respected by everyone and one who doesn't help them is Duratma or a villain. So, Vivekananda decided to educate the people first and ask legal authorities to make proper rules to support reformation. Here, reformation means to bring necessary changes or improvements in the system. Vivekananda strongly believed that humanity comes first and there should be unity leaving all the caste aside. Vivekananda was called a wandering monk as he used to travel from one place to the other. On September 11, 1893, at the World Religion Conference in Chicago, 
He won the hearts of the people by addressing the audience as brothers and sisters of America. People clapped and appreciated his tremendous speech about patriotism, religion, Hinduism and many other concepts. Through this, the Westerners could understand the beautiful culture of India. He also attracted the audience while speaking at the Congress of Religion held in Paris in 1900. He also influenced the ruler of Mysore, Chamaraja Wadiyar X, to start schools for untouchable children. In order to educate people on social equality and other concepts, Vivekananda wrote books on Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Vivekananda at the age of 39 passed away following a third heart attack on July 4, 1902. Though he lived for a shorter period, his powerful speech, knowledge and his dedicated work towards society are remarkable. Firstly, let us understand the word Theosophy. Theosophy means divine wisdom, which means knowledge about God and spiritual things. A Russian author named Helena Petrona Blavatsky was deeply interested in studying many religions, human spirits, philosophies, etc. Therefore, Blavatsky along with her friend Colonel Henry Steele founded the Theosophical Society in 1875 in New York, America. For further studies, they came to India and started the head office of the Theosophical Society in 1886 at Adyar near Madras. Now let us see some of the aims of Theosophical Society. Firstly, Universal Brotherhood. In simple words, to create unity without creating a difference by race, color, caste or gender. To study and compare various religions and philosophies. To find and understand the powerful spirit of humans. To spread basic principles of Hindu sacred scriptures like Vedas and Upanishads to the world. Now let us see some of the reformation activities of Annie Besant. Firstly, she translated Bhagavad Gita to English and declared that Indian culture is superior compared to any other Western culture. She improved and strengthened the power of Hinduism in India and influenced Western people about Indian culture. She studied Vedanta and many other philosophies in India. She studied and compared the teachings of Hinduism and Buddhism. With the purpose of educating more people in India, she started Central Hindu College at Banaras in 1898, which later became a university with the support of Madan Mohan Malviya in 1916. In order to educate people on social problems in India, she started periodicals called New India and Common Wheel. Periodicals are magazines or newspapers which are published in regular intervals. She started a movement called the Home Rule League to support freedom fighters during Indian independence. Now let me explain in detail about Home Rule League. This movement was first started in Ireland when they were under the control of the British. They wanted to self-rule without the help of outsiders like the British. 
So in order to throw them out of their home, that is out of their country, Ireland protested against the British through the Home Rule League, stating that they can rule their home, that is, they can rule their country themselves without the help of the British. Later, this movement was introduced by Annie Besant in India to fight against the British for freedom and to support Indians to rule their country themselves, which is nothing but self-rule. So two home rule leagues took place in India. One movement in the areas like Maharashtra, Hyderabad regions and North Karnataka under the leadership of freedom fighter Bal Gangadhar Tilak. And the other movement at Madras under the leadership of Annie Besant. With her dedicated service, Miss Annie Besant became the first woman president of the Indian National Congress. Indian National Congress is a political party of India started in 1885. Annie Besant was called Shweta Saraswati as she started many schools with the purpose of educating many Indians. Her valuable services are still remembered with great respect in India. During the British period in India, there was a backward community called Azawas in Kerala. Azawas were almost 25% of the total population in Kerala. Due to casteism, Azawas faced many problems by the upper caste people like Brahmins. Firstly, Azawas were not allowed to public schools like upper caste people like Brahmins. They were not allowed to politically represent like other communities. They were not allowed to do government jobs like others. Entry into the temples roads were restricted for them. They were not allowed to wear footwear and a lot of restrictions were put even on women's dresses. So to solve these issues, a movement called Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam was started by Padmanabhan Palpu in 1903. Padmanabhan Palpu was a great follower of Sri Narayana Guru. Sri Narayana Guru was a philosopher and social reformer from the same community. Philosophy in simple words mean a person's thinking or idea on some concepts. Reformer is someone who brings necessary changes or improvements to the system. Sri Narayana Guru believed that there is one caste, one religion and one God for all human beings. He believed that this can be achieved only by educating people. So, Padmanabhan started this movement with the guidance and support of his Guru. Now let us see some of the aims of Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam. Firstly, to uplift and encourage the Ezava community to be treated equally like upper caste people. To protest against Brahmins who were not giving any respect and facilities to Ezavas. To discourage polygamy. Here, polygamy means commonly a husband in the presence of their partner marrying another at the same time. To stop the untouchability concept where there was a belief that touching a backward community people makes the upper caste people impure. Now 
Now let us see some of the contributions of Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam. Firstly, Sri Narayana Guru wrote 45 books in Tamil, Sanskrit and Malayalam to educate people about unity and social equality. Among these, one of his best works was Atmopadesha Satakam. Secondly, to allo Izawas into the temple, Sri Narayana Guru and his team started the Vyokam movement in 1924. After this movement, Izawas were allo to enter Shiva temple in Vyokam and later to all other temples in Kerala. Even great leaders like Gandhiji and Periyar supported this movement. Backward communities are slowly allowed to participate in elections and to take public jobs like upper caste people. Sri Narayana Guru's reformation resulted in many changes in Kerala where his messages spread to many parts of India. His name became history with his great work on social equality in Kerala. E. V. Ramaswamy Periyar was born in 1879 in Tamil Nadu. He was a social reformer and an author who fought against caste system. One day when he went to a Hindu temple in Kashi, free food in the temple was served only to the Aryan community, that is, to Brahmins. Due to hunger, he wore a Brahmin dress and went inside. But after noticing that he was a non-Brahmin, he was pushed out of the temple. Later he noticed that the temple was built by a rich Dravidian. This made him hate the Aryan community, that is Brahmins, for treating the Dravidians badly by not allowing or offering food in the temple. He was a businessman and later became a magistrate of Erod Municipality, Tamil Nadu. After resigning from this post, he became a member of the Congress Party. He respected Mahatma Gandhi and participated in the non-cooperation movement held against the British rule by Mahatma Gandhi. When he became the president of the Tamil Nadu Congress Party, he wished that all untouchables, that is, Lower caste people should be all out to temples, but Brahmins of the same Congress party strongly oppose this idea. Because of all his past experiences by Brahmins who used to believe in Lord Rama and Sanskrit language, Periyar Ramaswamy rejected Rama and made Ravana as the Dravidian leader. When many people opposed this, he accepted Sanskrit Rama and Ravana as cultural ideals. He also followed Tamil philosophers Guru Ayoti Dasarand and PM Pillai who also stood against a caste system followed by Brahmins. Now let us see some of the social justice works done by Periyar. Firstly, though he was in the Congress party, he strongly supported the Government of Justice Party started in 1916, passed an act in Madras against Brahmin's culture towards backward community. He supported the Vaikom movement to allow untouchables into the temples in Kerala. Later, once he started this movement in Tamil Nadu, Periyar published a weekly magazine called Kudi Arasu to educate against the cruel caste system. 
periodicals are the magazines or newspapers which are published in regular intervals due to this he was imprisoned for 6 months finally after this movement adi dravidas or the lower caste people among dravidians were allowed to temples he came out of the congress party when the congress party brahmins opposed his idea of 50% communal seat reservations that is caste based reservations for non brahmins for education and government jobs he opposed the varna system which is a caste system followed by brahmins He started a self-respect movement in 1925 against Brahmins to respect Dravidian language and culture. Periyar introduced a self-respect marriage system where Brahmins were not allowed to chant mantras and the exchange of garland with good words was believed more than expensive marriages. Along with this, he also encouraged inter-caste and widow marriages. Periyar strongly opposed Brahmin's caste system in the name of culture and opposed until his death. He died in 1973 at the age of 94. He was called Periyar by people out of love. Periyar means respectable or elderly person. He is still remembered in South India for bringing social equality and unity among people.